So we've just done a very efficient, I would say, aero fit on my Rimbrake Cervelo S5 Chrome One. It's got a lovely one by chainring on it. We've got the aero coach chain guard, catcher thing, majib on it, some Zephyr wheels, the new road handlebars as well. Change the height a bit a little bit, shorten the stem. I put it out there on social media asking for people who had any questions for Zav, because Zav is a scarily intelligent man when it comes to bike aerodynamics and engineering. If you watch things like the Tour de France, the Giro, Olympics, World Championships, all those kind of things, you know, major events, you probably have seen Aero Coach stuff somewhere. So I have a list of questions for you, quick fire questions. They okay. might not be quick fire though. I'll try and give you quick fire answers. So I'm gonna start simply. The best bang for your buck aero thing is your position on the bike. If you can get yourself into more aero position, obviously understanding how to do that takes a bit of research, looking at photos of yourself or having a look at what other people who are aero do, mm. or if you spend money and you have a, an aero fit or you go to a, a Wintel Velodrome aero testing session or something like that. But the biggest bang for your buck is to get you in the best position. In general, that means making yourself smaller on the bike. Um, there's a lot more to it than that, but uh, most of the time that's the, that's the thing that we'd say is the, um, yeah, the cheapest thing, because it's free. Second's clothing, really, because you, you're 80, 85% of the drag, and what you cover yourself in is quite important. Um, and from a bang for buck perspective, you don't necessarily have to buy really expensive aero clothing, you just need to get clothing that fits you better. Mm. So clothing is, clothing is the, the second one, I'd say. Tubeless or inner tubes? For performance, I've actually, and like a lot of the riders um, uh, on the AeroCoach team, have been using inner tubes, mainly because that allows you to change your tyres based on the um, the environment. So it means if you've got a terrible road surface or something, you can very quickly swap to a slightly higher rolling resistance tyre that's not going to puncture, mm. and then the next day or week or whatever, you might have a, a TT on a better road surface and you can just change to a um, a different tire, mm. whereas if you have to retube this and detube this stuff, it's a complete nightmare. And for time trialing and going quick and things like that, you're not ten you're not generally riding in a situation where you're expecting to puncture. Whereas you ride off road, then that is something that you're expecting to have to manage. Whereas in a TT, you're not expecting to puncture. You want to go as fast as possible. And so being able to change your equipment based on the um, the conditions is something that will give you a better performance benefit if you can do it really quick and easy. So, inner tubes. And would you say latex or like the Schwabi Aerodan tubes over the normal? Definitely, yeah. So so that's that's another good point. Tubeless and latex tubes or uh, some of the top end stuff like a Schwabi Aerodan is very close to a latex tube in terms of rolling resistance. There's no difference in terms of rolling resistance between a tubeless setup and the identical setup with latex tube in it. So, if you, you can the tubeless isn't faster inherently mm. it's the tire that makes it quick um, and you can bang a um, yeah bang a latex tube in is the best thing to do i think i already know the answer to this but one by or two by uh i mean yeah one by for racing is going to be quicker as long as you've got the gear ratios that you need it's not super hilly race depending on the gear ratio surely it's about trying as we've said earlier about trying to keep as central in the cassette as well yeah, even if you've got a two by setup, then having a big chain ring, which allows you to move the chain up the cassette to the largest sprockets, is going to be much more efficient than having, let's say, you know, a 5211 compared to a 5612 or something. It's very similar gear, but the 5612 is going to have a better efficiency because the chain's not bending as much around the around the wrist sprocket. Wax or lube? A really, really, really good chain lube is is close to wax, but wax is generally quicker. It's very small though. Best new new chain first. Yeah. New chain first, and then um, you can worry about what you live it with afterwards. So you're a waxer. Wax, wax is is yeah, it's dead good. I'm a waxer. Yeah. <laughs> Who did we have this conversation with? Nico. Nico's a luber. Oh, Nico's a luber. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't realise I was being put in a <laughs> potentially put in a camp. What is better, an aero bike or an aero position? A, a position. Yeah. You can stick someone on an aero bike, but if they if their position's garbage, then. Um, you're not going to go very quick. And surely if you don't have an aero bike but your position's good on whatever bike you do have, that's going to be fast. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, nice. Disc brake or rim brake for TT and road racing? Disc brake for road racing is a great idea. As long as everyone in the field's on the same braking system, it's just it's just better. I mean, it's better braking yeah. and um, I feel like the modulation is much more consistent. For TTs, whatever your bike comes with, doesn't really matter. You can't compare. People often ask the question, which is more aero, disc brakes or rim brakes? but the problem is the industry's now moved so far towards disc brakes that all of the development and aerodynamic 
you know, improvements they're making on bikes are on the disc brake bikes. Mm. So it's inevitable that disc brake bikes are getting more and more aerodynamic, which will overtake older bikes, regardless of what the braking system was, yep. it was rim brakes. So um, currently we're in a situation where there are some old rim brake bikes that are as aero as some of the new disc brake ones, but as a bike, they're not as good. Mm. So you might as well follow the, um, follow the industry. If, you, if you're getting a new bike, don't worry too much about it and just get the bike that you want and it comes with a braking system, then fine. But if you've got a rim brake bike, it's going to be super fast, it's fine. I, I always think because I before having the P series Cervelo, I had the Giant Trinity. Yes, it was a pretty aero frame for the cost of it. My biggest gripe with that bike was the brakes. They were yeah. hard to set up and a shit. Yeah, I think that that's something that people want these days just to be fit and forget. Uh, especially if you have one set of wheels that you just use for racing and training, mm. you don't have to worry about brake blocks and things, and you can just you know set them up, and you're not going to wear away the brake track, and you can ride them in whatever weather's. Um, I mean, I personally I've moved to a disc brake TT bike um, purely because um, I was having trouble with. I had a really old rim brake um, bike that was very finickety with the brakes, and mm. um, yeah, I much prefer having the new one. Um, and the bikes, as I said, like there's more to it as well. Like the more modern bikes just have extra features that make them better. Better integration in terms of, you know, like the front end on TT bikes is better integrated um, and better clearance at the back for, you know, more modern wheels and things like that. Mm. So, but there's nothing, it's not to say that rim brake bikes are, are dead or anything. I've, they're still plenty fast. What is the worst bang for your buck that you can spend on your bike? Probably a frame. I think, I think getting a, an expensive frame that's not good yeah. would be. Because that, that's like the biggest cost of a bike, yeah, I think, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Maybe group set, but then most group sets are similar cost. Because group set's not going to speed you up. Yeah. Um, and and also, I think when you talk about the group set scale a bit, like obviously I'm going to talk about Shimano sure. bias here, but you look at say if I looked at Durace Di2, mm -hmm. Ultegra Di2, 105 Di2, three Di2 group sets, the aesthetics of them is the same. Mm -hmm. It's just surely there's no difference in terms of how aero or not that group set is. Yeah. The crank's basically the same, the shifters are the same shape, mechs are the same sort of shape. Yeah, it's just the weight. Yeah. Um, and yeah, everything else, all the modulation of the brakes and how fast it's going to shift and everything's going to be the same as well. Um, so yeah, I think I say worst bang for the buck of the frame, it really depends what you're going from and to, I think. Yeah. Um, just because the frame's the most expensive bit, I'd say that that's the thing that you could potentially get wrong. And not just from how maybe it's not good aero, but more from like if it doesn't get you into a good position. Mm. Let's say you buy the wrong size or the frame isn't adjustable enough to be able to allow you to hold the right position, then that could be mm. um, that could be something to, to watch out for. I was thought you were going to say something about oversized pulley wheels. <laughs> oh, that, I mean, I think they are quicker. They and I, and I, want, I want people to stop thinking that they're so unaero that it makes you slower because or it's the same and it's not true right they are faster overall yeah. we've done it we've done the testing <laughs> we've field testing and they are faster it's not a great bang for buck actually if you spend a thousand pounds on a special titanium jobby that's actually yeah i think you're probably right <laughs> yeah i wouldn't do that how much more aerodynamic would you be without a moustache uh 30 watts i'd say yeah <laughs> shit what if you like aeroed it off and like waxed it down and then you could it be a wind trip you could you and if your head was at the right angle and you only rode at that angle i think yeah. you could you could get you away shape with it. it yeah what you about a beard it. a beard we see we, we think as we've done we've done wind tunnel testing on stuff like that before we had someone put on a fake beard but it it kind of when he got into the position it, it filled the gap between his head and his neck and it made him faster and so everyone was like oh beards are faster now and i'm like i'm not really sure that's the case but we'll run with it um yes i think it'd be a, it'd be a personal uh, something we'd have to test in the tunnel for you personally. <laughs> Next time we get it, just shave it off and then we'll see. What are the best aero upgrades you can make on a budget? Depends where you're starting from. If you're starting from just a road bike and needing a TT, get aero bars. Again, position, yada yada, that does it. Skin suit, helmet's good. So if you have a, a road helmet and you're doing a TT and you need you need to have an aero helmet because um, that speeds you up quite a lot. Um, tires, tires the best one as well. Latex tubes and tires cost nothing, and it's not an aero upgrade, right? But it's, it, it doesn't half make you quicker. Yeah. Uh, helmet with vent covered using electrical tape versus one that has no covers on it, effectively. Road helmet or TT helmet? The guy messaged me afterwards, and he was referencing a the Giro TT helmet, but also a road helmet. Fine. So with TT helmets, it depends on the helmet very much. Um, some are designed to have channels to let the airflow go through because there's a high pressure sort of zone on the front of the helmet and you need to channel the airflow through a helmet if possible 
rather than just letting it hit the helmet and then split around you. So there are lots of helmets these days that have these channels internally mm. uh, and exit vents as well, like exit ports so that the airflow can go through and out and it be efficient rather than having to waste energy going around and then not necessarily reattach. Road helmets, um, they're, getting, they, they're becoming more like TT helmets these days and that they're designed for channeling airflow from an aero perspective as well as cooling. Um, because if you can move the airflow past someone's head, it, it improves your convective cooling. Um, I mean, yeah, taping up vents everywhere on a road helmet on some of them probably will speed you up. Um, it's I don't think it's UCI legal, so don't worry about taping up road helmets. Get a nice aero road helmet. It's designed to do what it's meant to do. Um, and then TT helmets very similar as well. There are some instances where taping the vents on a TT helmet is quicker, but it's quite individual. Yeah. Will heavier riders see aero gains, or are they better off with an endurance bike? For comfort everyone will see aero gains uh, unless you're traveling at very very slow speeds um, consistently like if you're traveling at 25k an hour you'll still see aero improvements and something that people tend to get wrong is or, or, or misconstrue is that slow riders don't benefit from aerodynamics but if you're doing a 100k bike ride and you're going slower any improvements you make to aerodynamics you'll save more time mm. than a faster rider because mm. they cover the course a much shorter um, time period and the slower riders are out for longer. So um, aero is for everyone. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, don't, don't, don't shy away from it just because you think you might be heavier or slower and might not be going as quick as other people. Um, obviously it makes more important more, it's more important the faster you go. Yeah. Um, but if you can do things to improve your aerodynamics that don't affect your comfort, if comfort is a priority for you, then you should do them. How can tall people equal aero? We've, so we, uh, it, was, it was public, we used to sponsor Team Quebecer. We had Max Welshheid on the team, who's six foot six, six foot seven. We got him pretty aero, so. He was um, pretty good at bikes. He was, he was good at bikes. He's the top 10 at Roubaix. Uh, big lad, uh, loves his aerodynamics, and um, yeah, we got him pretty. We got him really aero actually at one point. It was great. I guess the argument on that as well is like, yes, a large person maybe because they're larger might not think they can get as aero, but uh -huh. the amount of power you can put down surely is going to sort of balance it up as, a bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's, there are situations that will favour a, a big ride. Let's say everyone has you know similar aerodynamics relative to their size. Some some occasions will favour a small aerodynamic rider. Some will favour a big aerodynamic rider. But um, but yeah, you see you see a big range of certainly in the world tour now. Like Evenepoel's tiny, uh, good very quick. Huge. Ganna's huge. Yeah. You know, Walshai, Kung, Cabania, they're all big. But Roglic is fast. Bagatcha is not very big, but he's still fast. So uh, Vingegaard as well. There's lots of like there's a, there's a yeah. You, you, there's not really one particular body type that will do always do well every time trial. How do wheel slash rim manufacturers like Aerocoach mm -hmm. deal with crosswinds? When we're designing wheels, we it depends on what the focus of the wheel project that we're doing. So we've got two deep section wheels. We've got one that's specifically designed that's a little bit shallower, um, which we design for crosswinds. You, you simulate it in the computer, right? So um, we try and move the um, pressure area closer to the center line of the wheel so that when the wind hits the wheel from an angle, it's not hitting the very ex extended edge of the rim, which has a great turning arc and will knock the wheel out of place. So in terms of like how you design for it, it's really difficult and it took us ages to do on our wheels. And we, we, yeah, we spent a long time making sure that the, the 78 mil wheel, the Zephyr that we do, um, is you can ride that anywhere. And like it's, it handles like a 50 mil wheel. Mm. And then we do a 100 mil wheel, which we had to spend like also an enormous amount of time on because it's so deep that you can't make it unrideable otherwise yeah it might be theoretically quick but if you can't ride it it's game over mm. um but it, it is rideable and and you know how you do that it's yeah computer simulation um and rider testing at the end of the day but um most of the work we do is all in yeah, it's all in the computer what, one of the things that i love about what aerocoach is doing is that you're incredibly passionate about helping make people faster whether that's advice on the website, um, you know, showing all the data and information, providing products that are well engineered and well, de well designed by in-house, which is important to mention, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, hosting events as well. Like, you do a lot for the cycling community. Yeah, I think that because we're all cyclists here, and like, we all have raced bikes in the past, if not carry on racing bikes now, um, it's all born out of that. It's not, you know, we're, we're not, we haven't been parachuted in just to sell products to people. Mm. Um, and something that you know, I, I feel 
when I first started riding, there wasn't a lot of information around about how to make yourself quicker. And things like the wrong resistance stuff we put on the website, the reason why we've done that is because we had this huge database when we were making wheels, first designing wheels, we had to know what tires we wanted to design them around. So we had to do loads of testing on tires. What's the best tire? Fine, we'll choose that and then and work around it. Um, and so we had this huge database and there was no reason not to share it with people because you know we don't sell tires mm. and we might as well help people out if possible um, rather than just being you know all super secretive with with that sort of thing so um, hopefully that can help inform people and it's not just a case of like oh you must use this tire or whatever at least you can make decisions based on the stuff you know uh, we're not a review website yeah. um, we just try and find out data and if we're doing some error testing or whatever um, then yeah, I'm happy to I'm happy to do that because I didn't have access to that kind of thing when I started, and I found aerodynamics really, um, you know, in aerodynamics and cycling was was difficult. Mm. Um, it still is difficult to be honest, but um, uh, I think that resources are, are, are useful. Um, and yeah, I mean, we can be putting on races for as long as I, you know, as long as I'm still around, <laughs> we'll be organising races and things because um, it's important. There wouldn't be any cyclists if you didn't, if you, uh, well, bike races at least if you didn't have bike races yeah exactly so, um uh, and it's re very rewarding as well um putting on the races yeah definitely yeah yeah people it's people come out to have a good time and you know you finish a race and everyone's certainly if you're doing time trials whatever, which is normally what we do what we do um people come back and they smash themselves to bits and you get the endorphin rush and get your cake out yeah. <laughs> yeah it's very you know unless you've had like a, a mishap or something then yeah. generally speaking you've enjoyed yourself so it's a win-win situation really well i so Aerocoach do a road bike TT, hmm. which hopefully I might be able to do. Uh, the regional champs. Yeah, yeah, Midland Championships, yeah. And a gravel hill climb. Gravel hill climb at the end of the year. We'll do, we've done that every year, yeah. Is there any others I'm missing? Those, we, we also help run club TT throughout the year as well, uh, yeah. which are local midweek ones. Um, but the big, yeah, the big events we have each year are yeah, road bike champs, Midland champs, and then um, gravel hill climb at the end of the year. Maybe I should do all three. <laughs> On a mountain bike. On a mountain bike. <laughs> gravel, gravel hill climb on a mountain bike. It's not a bad shout. With Hard tail right. Yeah, with this <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Done. <laughs> do you want us to say that? That's the. Do you want any more? Uh, I guess just maybe just a thank you and a and a an outro, which I know you love doing. I fucking hate doing outros. I get. I feel really awkward. So oh, I, I just, love you. I normally just go up on a tangent. Right. <laughs> just keep uh, rambling. Just keep rambling. Fade to black. Yeah. Uh, Thank you very much for watching this video. This is Zab, he's a lovely man. Over there somewhere is the rest of Aerocoach. Please go check out their website. There's so much useful information on there and really, really cool products. And yeah, just go and read and learn and geek out stuff. Aero things. Like. Like, <laughs> subscribe, comment. That's the bit I hate. Yeah. <laughs>